something terrifying has been recently uncovered at the bottom of the Euphrates River. The recent footage, which depicts an eerie and incomprehensible event, has terrified even the most explorers. So what could be causing these strange and unsettling occurrences, and what dangers lurk in the darkness below? Join us as we start on an adventure into the unknown, uncovering a terrifying secret of the biblical river, Euphrates River. This is the Euphrates River, the biggest river in Western Asia. It is about 1,740 miles long. It starts in Turkey and runs through Syria and Iraq before emptying into the Persian Gulf. For thousands of years, the river has been a key source of water for farmland, industry, and homes. It has also been an important trade route. Ancient cultures like the Sumerians, Babylonians, and Assyrians all had a lot to do with the growth of the Euphrates River. The river helped these cultures grow crops and move people and goods, and many of their most important towns were built along its banks. The river also affected the rise and fall of dynasties, such as the Persian Empire, the Roman Empire, and the Ottoman Empire. Even now, the Euphrates River is a key source of water for agriculture and hydroelectric power in the area. But the river is having a number of problems, such as less water flow because of dams and climate change. People are worried about how this will affect farming, the environment, and the security of the area as a whole. But in the Old Testament, the Euphrates River is often used as a point of reference for geography. It marks the eastern edge of the land that God promised to the Israelites. In Deuteronomy 1.7, God tells Moses, Turn and go, go to the hill country of the Amorites and to all their neighbors in the Arabah, in the hill country and in the lowland and in the Negeb and by the seacoast, the land of the Canaanites and Lebanon as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. Also, the Euphrates River is named in connection with the Babylonian Empire and other great empires in the Old Testament. In Jeremiah 13, 4-7, God tells Jeremiah to bury a linen belt near the Euphrates River as a sign that he will destroy Judah and Jerusalem's pride, just like the river will destroy the belt. In the book of Revelation in the New Testament, the Euphrates River is named as one of the four rivers that will dry up before the Battle of Armageddon. Revelation 16, 12 says, the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water dried up to make a way for the kings from the east. People often think that this text is a prophecy about the end of the world, water level. The water levels in the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in southern Iraq have dropped to levels that have never been seen before, and Iraqi officials promised yesterday to take steps to solve the issue. An AFP photographer stated that he was able to view the bed of the Euphrates River from the banks of the river in the city of Naziria, which is the administrative center of the D-Kar governorate in southern Iraq. Baghdad has on multiple occasions leveled accusations against its neighbors in Turkey and Iran, claiming that those countries are decreasing the amount of water that reaches Baghdad by constructing dams on nearby rivers. The Iraqi Ministry of Water Resources stated that the low quantity of water reaching Iraq from neighboring Turkey was to blame for the situation in some southern districts of the country. According to a statement released by the organization, this has caused a significant drop in the country's water reserves. The government also placed blame on Iraqi farmers, saying that they violated water regulations in order to irrigate their land despite the fact that they were required to do so by the ministry. Because of the country's severe water deficit, the Iraqi government has begun rationing water for a variety of uses, including irrigation, agriculture, drinking, and the replenishment of southern Iraq's marshes. The Discovery Archaeologists have found the roots of our modern way of life in many places, including the Harappan, Mesopotamian, and Mohenjo-Daro cultures. These discoveries have provided us with evidence that our predecessors were far more advanced than us and were familiar with various cutting-edge technology, some of which we may not even be aware of. In a recent instance of this kind, archaeologists have uncovered an interesting finding of the remnants of a bar in southern Iraq that dates back almost 5,000 years. This discovery was made very recently. It is hoped that this discovery would throw light on the routine activities that take place in the world's first cities. A U.S. Italian team recently made the find in the ancient ruins of Lagash, northeast of the modern city of Naziria. Lagash is known as one of the earliest urban centers of the Sumerian civilization in ancient Iraq. Due to the fact that numerous historical discoveries were found in this location in the past, the town, which is now known as Al-Hiba, has developed into a site of major importance to archaeologists. It is situated in the middle of the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers. It was found that the city was built on four different islands that were surrounded by swamps. During the time of the Sumerian civilization, the area was composed of separate city-states. 
Every single one of them was encircled by walls and worshipped their respective gods. After the excavations, the researchers found an open courtyard that was used for eating, along with benches, an oven, ancient food remains, and a 5,000-year-old moisture wick structure that can be compared to a modern-day fridge to keep food cool. The group also found bowls in the shape of cones that had the remains of fish inside of them. According to an article published by AFP, the director of the project, Holly Pittman, stated, So we've got the refrigerator, we've got the hundreds of vessels ready to be served, benches where people would sit, and behind the refrigerator is an oven that would have been used for cooking food. After Holly's explanation that what we understand this thing to be is a place where people could come to eat and that is not domestic, the archaeologists discovered evidence of beer drinking at the site. We call it a tavern because beer was by far the most common drink for the Sumerians, even more common than water, she said, adding that a beer recipe was found on a cuneiform tablet in one of the buildings that had been dug up in the area. According to the accounts, archaeologists also discovered a recipe for an old beer at the location they were excavating. Also, it has been said that excavations at the site resumed in 2019 as part of a joint project between the Penn Museum, the University of Cambridge, and the State Board of Antiquities and Heritage in Baghdad. They have been using new techniques like drone photography and genetic analysis to get data and information. The scholars have been able to obtain a better knowledge of Sumerian society and how people lived during that time period as a result of their utilization of these contemporary approaches. According to reports, early excavations in the area focused on religious architecture and learning about the elites. However, the most recent excavation focused on non-elite places to learn more about ancient cities as a whole. The discovery of this artifact has generated a lot of excitement among people who are interested in history and archaeology. In the past, food has been found in several sites such as the Mesopotamian, Sumerian, and Indus Valley, but this is the first time that a building similar to a refrigerator has been uncovered. It shows not only how skilled the people of that time were, but also why they put fish, which goes bad quickly, in a cool box. This is the first time in history that something this exciting has been found. The Sumerian Temple According to the British Museum, a team of archaeologists in Iraq recently discovered the ruins of a Sumerian temple that dates back 4,500 years and was devoted to Ningirsu, the Mesopotamian god of springtime thunder. The long-lost temple was constructed out of mud brick and served as the magnificent focal point of the ancient city of Girsu, which is today known as the archaeological site known as Tello. At the heart of the city of Girsu, we have discovered, and are still currently excavating, one of the most important and sacred spaces of all ancient Mesopotamia, a temple dedicated to the chief god of Girsu. Sebastian Ray, a curator of ancient Mesopotamia and lead archaeologist at the British Museum in London, said in a presentation of the findings, the findings were presented by Sebastian Ray. Mesopotamia is a large region between the rivers Euphrates and Tigris that includes Iraq, eastern Syria, southeastern Turkey, and a portion of western Iran and Kuwait. It is the location of some of the earliest known human civilizations. Girsu was a vibrant cultural hub at the heart of Mesopotamia. The Sumerians are credited with founding both religion and the first known written legal system. They are also thought to have been the world's oldest civilization. Ernest de Sarzec, a French archaeologist, made the initial discovery of the ruins of Girsu in 1877. He removed all of the items that he could locate, including a statue of the Sumerian monarch Gudea that was 4,000 years old. Gudea controlled the city around the end of the 3rd millennium BC when Girsu was in its prime. As a consequence of this, a lot of individuals had the misconception that there was nothing else to dig up. Scientists have been unable to visit the site in the Dikar area of southern Iraq due to the fact that it has been the scene of multiple times of conflicts. Despite this, Ray and his companions were unable to shake the notion that Girsu held additional information to disclose. Ray said, After the Second World War and years of fighting that followed in Iraq, the site of Girsu was almost forgotten. It is not fanciful to say that today, Girsu is probably one of the most important heritage sites in the world that very few people know about. Now, more than a century and a half after the last time archaeologists studied the amazing site, the group led by Ray has found the enormous temple. The use of remote sensing technology allowed archaeologists to uncover aspects of the site that had been buried by sand and other deposits. In addition to this, they developed digital elevation models in order to investigate how the topography has evolved because of the excavations that took place in the 19th century. After five seasons of excavations at the temple site, 
we were able to uncover a large area of this ancient sanctuary. This area included the inner sanctum, a ceremonial square, an interior wall which featured a gate, and we were also able to identify and excavate part of the enclosure wall of the religious complex, including a monumental gate. Ancient inscriptions refer to the temple of Eninu, which also translates to White Thunderbird. Inside the temple was a revered statue of Ningirsu, the hero thunder god who was considered to be one of the most significant deities in the Sumerian pantheon. According to the British Museum, the Sumerians believed that Ningirsu had control over spring thunder, rainstorms, and floods, as well as commanding the plow and plowing of the land. In addition, they believed that Ningirsu had power over the plow and plowing of the land. Surprisingly, the recently revealed walls that encircled the sacred place completely match a map that was engraved onto a statue of King Gudea that was discovered in the early stages of the excavations. According to what Ray has claimed, Ininu, also known as the White Thunderbird, is the oldest temple for which we have detailed inscriptions. These inscriptions are in the form of an ancient plan engraved into the statue of the king. We were able to put our theory to the test by opening a series of excavation soundings and identifying, for example, the foundations of a temple gate exactly where we predicted the temple gate would be according to the 4,000-year-old plan. So, that comes to the end of the video. From strange finds to prophetic visions, we've delved into the rich history and significance of this historic waterway. But the digging does not have to end here. There is still so much to learn and discover. Whether it's diving into the history of the Euphrates River or seeking out the mysteries of other ancient sites around the world, there is always more to learn and explore. So, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.